I've got a list of stuff to get done today, so we better crack on. So, my girls need a bail, which I'll do in a minute, but I also need to get this fella out because I need to get the remaining belt on the extra head off, so I got the size I can take it with me. I have to get over to Yate to Pixons before midday to get that belt replaced, so I've got to get two of them, but I can't leave here until half past nine at the very earliest because Holly's got someone picking up cakes and I'm the only person here. So you may or may not have already noticed it's quite windy today so um, priority is to get this fixed second priority is to try and video it for you guys without too much wind noise there may have to be a bit of a yeah give and take on that so I'm going to do this up in the top yard outside the shed Mainly so that if uh, this lady who comes in for her cakes, and she's got a lot of cakes, I mean, so I can see her. Um, this should not be a dirty job. I should not get dirty hands doing this, and besides that, all the cakes are in boxes, but I've got, again, I'm doing this, I've got to be mindful that someone's going to be coming in, I've got to go in the fridge. This will be daughter. You won't come out where you can then you I suppose. Um, but cakes and muck and livestock, they they don't really go very well together. Right, hopefully if I tuck this right in the corner in here, we'll keep the wind noise down a bit. So this is the task, undo these fellas here, undo that one there because this is this cam is what tightens up the belt. Take this belt off, take this belt to Pixons so they can, if they haven't got the exact numbers, which they hopefully they have, they can match it with something else. They can, no, they can use this belt to match it. Get a pair of belts, because there's no point in putting one on here. This belt will be stretched, a new belt will not be stretched. You need to put a pair on, ideally a matching pair. Uh, come back home put new belts on and then I've got to take these tabs off of here these ever so slightly bodged up tabs that will be broken off and clean them up and weld them or something similar I might have to make some new ones weld them back onto the guard because I cannot use the machine without that guard on because a hedge will just rip the belts off again so okay right you and I want you Thank you. 
There we go. Now we're off. All right. Stay there a minute. Right. One belt off. Okay. Put that in the van, and that bit is ready to go. It looks dirtier than it is. I mean, the cattle are clean. Do you want a bale too? Yeah, I'll give the bale as well. What about it? It can't go in your for half an hour. I'm still trying to work out the easiest way of trying to give you guys a driving lesson in this thing. I mean, it is a really simple thing to drive. Um, the only difficult bit is learning the coordination between hands and feet um, because you could have it's like rubbing your tummy and patting your head at the same time but doing it with your legs as well does that does that make sense have you ever tried that you know the rub your tummy pat your head um, and then change directions do it the other way whatever else you have to be able to do that with your hands and feet so like one foot going up and down, the other foot going around and around, or something like that. So, and it's just muscle memory. This is one of those things, this machine is, it's simple once you've trained your muscle memory. There you are, that's the lesson. No, no, I will, I will go for it properly, um, but I'll probably do it a bit later in the year uh, when it's a bit cleaner and I'll go right, right around the whole machine um, and try and explain to the best of my knowledge I mean, I've had this thing a long time, so I know it fairly well. Fairly well. Yeah. Okay, right, let's crack on. Soft tire for a minute. Uh Like peeling an orange. Come on. You know the rules. You know how it works. Come on. Come on. Come on. Any time today. What? How are you this morning, darling? Hey? How are you? You alright? Go on then. Go on. Go on. No one seems very keen to go in today. Go on. What are you doing in there? Get out of it. You cheeky monkey. Go on. Get out of it. Out. Out. Go on. Go on, in you go. Go on. She's walking.
walking slow, but she's walking better. She's not holding there. Go on, you. Go on. Get in there. Go on. No. No. Go on. You little devil. Go on. Go on. Go on. Get in there. So the plan I think is going to be, they got a new bell, that's going to keep them occupied for an hour or so. <coughs> Once I've got back with the parts of the um, hedge trimmer, the pressure's off that. As long as I've got the bits, I can repair that today or tomorrow. Obviously I can't do it without the bits, but... <coughs> so that is kind of a priority this morning. But once I'm back with that, I think I'll clean the beds out on both sides. And then once the beds are done, I'll actually come out here and do some of this yard. But I think what we might do today, something a bit different. I'll move these feed troughs. I think the trailer would be okay. Move these gates around and I'll actually take some of this from the outside out. So it's built up in there, which is what we wanted. We wanted the ground to build up in there to keep their feet dry, but it's now got to the point where it's a bit too much around the outside. That gate is getting shorter by the day. I've got a bull in here and we're bullying and stuff like that. Don't really want short gates, but high gates. High. Okay, bit of hay for the young stock now. This is one of those brain fart moment things. The tractor was in the shed first thing, which is where I've been keeping this. So when I picked that bale up, even though it was right next to the empty shed, my brain was still saying, there's a tractor in there, we'll unwrap the bale over there. I don't like this getting old business. Don't want 
with you in there. A bit of a scratch about tidy up in the yard yesterday. We were running out of space. Now we've got more space. having feral pigeons in the barn. It's all, I mean, that's not a particularly bad one. Um, from where he was sat, I would imagine underneath the actual steel beams, the bales, I'm sure there's gonna be a line of guano on my bales now. The problem is, feral pigeons carry lots of nasty diseases, which is why some folks refer to them as flying rats. <sighs> I've been putting off getting rid of them, but I think it's got the point now where I really kind of have no choice. I mean, it's, I quite like to see them flying around. I just don't want them doing that to me bales. I don't want sick cattle just because I wasn't Hard enough, shall we say, shoot the pigeons. I know, I know, lots of you can offer to come out and shoot the pigeons for me, but you know what? It's my yard, my responsibility, I'll, and I've got the kit. 30 years ago, they wouldn't have had an oop here. The second one landed, you'd be shot. But as you get older, you get softer. Sometimes in more ways than one, apparently. Right then, you hooligans, your turn. You know what you got to do? Go on. Go on, up the bed. Go on, get up there. Get up. Up, 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 I saw that. Go on. Go on. Good steer. Go on. Go on. Go on. Get in there. Go on. Go on. And you. Go on, Tiller. Go on. Get in there. Go on. Thank you.
Oh. You know what? That brings back childhood memories of stacking small bales on the trailer. We didn't have machines and that then, it was all done by hand. But uh, it was a job, it was hard work, but I, I really loved stacking bales on trailers and then stacking the barn, even when it was red hot. But I loved it even more when the farmer I was working for had a little four three thousand uh, loader tractor and he bought a Cooks bale grab. Was it a Cooks or Browns? It was the long one. I think the Browns was the tall where they stacked eight high and the Cooks was a bit longer. Anyway, yeah, it was the longer one. I think that was the Cooks. So I loved that tractor even more than stacking it by hand. That won't last long. Give them a bit of space when they come through this hole because they don't kick out because they don't like you, but it's just what they do. They kick out. Right, it is quarter past nine. I've got time to go in the house, get this lot off, wash my hands, wait for Holly's customer, sort her out, and then we'll go to eight. Feed wheat, 220, 250, I need my glasses. Right, so milling wheat is up 10 or a ton, 257.8 pounds per ton. Last week it was 248, and this time last year it was 221. So um, this is why your loaf of bread is a bit dearer these days. Peas are the same, beans are the same, rape is down a bit, that's oilseed rape. Uh, lambs down a little bit, pigs down again. Everything, everything on here, apart from the wheat, is down. Finished cereals have gone up a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, so a lot of the prices are, are down. I mean, they're still not bad compared to a few years ago. <coughs> which would be great if it wasn't for the fact that now the inputs, the fertilizers, the chemicals and everything else have shot up. So the bit extra money the farmers were making this year on what they're selling is being spent back out on what they're having to buy to produce the same quantity and quality next year. And we don't know what the prices are next year. Input uh, prices are up. We're expecting wheat to stay up, I think, for the next couple of years, I think. Especially if the Russians keep playing silly buggers. But, um, yeah. Red diesel. Oh, grief. 73.1 pence per litre. This time last year, it was 48.2 pence per litre. 31p. Yeah, 31p ek more. So, which may not sound a lot to you folks that are buying white diesel at the pumps, you know, 73 pounds a pence a litre, what are you complain about? We've got to add 5% of VAT to that. So call it 80 pence a litre. But for tractors that are three or 400 horsepower and pulling great big players or whatever else, they will drink that. I mean, your little car is doing, what, 40, 60 miles to the gallon. Big tractors, nowhere near that. 
nowhere near that. So, I mean, my engine on my tractor is a 4.4 litre. You know, it's only 100 horsepower, but a 4.4 litre. It's going to suck some juice. 73.1. And I'm going to need 1,500 litres. All right. So I want 1,500 litres of diesel. It's going to cost me 73.1 pence per litre plus high percent VAT. So answers in the box below. What's that going to cost me? If you work it out, I haven't got to. This is what's going on next door to us at the farm, the solar farm. Um, we looked at it. There was a number of reasons for not wanting to do it. One, I do not like it. It looks horrible. Two, it takes agricultural land out of agriculture and puts it into commercial. So you're into tax. Um, then you've got issues again with um, inheritance tax and stuff like that. Um, I reckon, I don't care what they're saying, they're, they're paying you. Is it three three thousand pound a hectare, acre. Sounds great, but then you've got unearned income, which you're taxed on that. You've got to pay probably corporation or business tax because it's not agriculture, so you've got to pay tax on that. If you die and your kids take it on, they'll have to pay inheritance tax on it because there's inheritance tax on it because it's not agriculture. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is as I understand it. So yeah, they pay you loads of money. And then someone else, maybe the tax man, is going to take it all straight back off you again. And in the meantime, you can't walk across your fields. And everybody's got to look at that. I know we need renewable energy, but you know what? There's enough industrial buildings in towns and cities, which is kind of where we need the power. Why can't they put them on industrial buildings and just leave the green fields alone? Down the side of the motorway. All right, thousands of miles of motorway, all the banks. Okay, I know, reflection, sun and dazzling, but surely there's a way of doing something on the banks of the motorway. <sighs> no, we're near the motorway. I don't want it. Only drink average banned over misleading meat and dairy claims. Yeah, well, they were talking right out of their backsides, weren't they? I'm glad he got shot down. Ready? Go on up. Okay, cake's been collected. The lovely young lady customer is happy, as was her friend. We can now go to yard safe. I've got a dog out. That one? That one of yours? Now we're back. When we get back, remind me to put my welding mask outside in the daylight. I tend to keep it in a box in the shed, um, and it's uh, it's a solar powered mask. So basically, when you strike your arc, it goes dark. It's one of those clever things. But I have found that if you don't use it for a while, whatever sort of residual backup or capacitor or whatever holds the charge inside is so flat that it doesn't work. You need to give it an hour of daylight, preferably sunshine, and it's perfect. But take it straight out of the box and put it on and try to just blind yourself. So yeah, if you could just remind me to put the mask on or outside when I get back, because I will be doing some welding later on, I hope. that then you better stay there Ugh. okay so the good news is they had one bad news is they only add one and I need two so there's another place around the corner I could try we'll go and see if we can get another one 
really need a matching pair. Hmm. So today's the day, by the way, that I go and do my Make It Meet Monday with Mr. Cornock and Mr. Perry and Ken, whose surname I can't remember. So yes, I'm going over there six o'clock this evening to go and eat some Perry's pork. I'm looking forward to that. Sounds like it's going to be a giggle. Right, they don't have any. Um, so if I want to get this thing fixed or put back together today, I've got to use one new belt and an old belt, which is not ideal. And it'll work, uh, but it does mean that I have to tighten, tighten up the belts enough to take the slack out of the old belt, but not so much that I put too much strain on the new one. It's a bit of a fine line. But being V-belts and they grip on the sides, I could probably get away with it. But I think what I'm going to do is when I get back, is I'll ring Pixons again, and I'm going to order two, and they can have two, because it's, it's, they're going to break again. It doesn't hurt to have a couple of spares. So in saying that, it wouldn't surprise me if I've not actually already got a couple of spares hidden somewhere in the workshop, and I forgot I got them. I wouldn't put it past me. Right, although it might not look like it, I've actually taken a whole heap of muck out of here. Um, I can't take it all out, because as some of you will be aware, the stone floor in here is actually road planings. I don't really want them directly on that, so um, hence the reason we put a wood chip down a bit. So, so yes, we've left some of it in here. This was always going to be the mucky side. As long as I kept one set of barred nice and clean, because they all tend to lie in that side anyway. A few of them go up against the fence in the corner, but very few actually lie in here, apart from maybe right next to the feeder. Well, I don't mind that either, so. Right, you can all come back in again now. <laughs> that all smells a bit different. Ooh, don't remember laying that one. That was ages ago. Right, well, that's this side done. We'll do that side later on. Um, Abby did say she might come down and give me a hand with that later on. Um, might even get her on the skid steer if she does. So, uh, yeah, big side next. I'm at dinner first.